Have you ever wondered how a phone turns its screen off automatically after some time? Or a traffic light changes signal over time? This is done using timer circuits. Let's say there is a buzzer and a battery. If I connect them together, the buzzer buzzes immediately. Now what circuit do I need to connect in between them to give a time delay? That's what I'm going to make and explain in this video. So let's begin. Do you know that a tank is a timer? Of course you do. If you try to fill it with a liquid such as water, it takes time to increase the water level. Let's say this tank takes 10 minutes to fill up to the level A. So this is a 10 minute timer. As you start filling up the tank, after 10 minutes water comes out of this pipe and it lets you know that 10 minutes is over. Now how to increase time? If you step on the pipe, a resistance to the flow of water is created and therefore it takes more time to fill the tank. So this way time can be increased. We can compare water filling of a tank in an electric circuit as well, a resistor capacitor circuit or RC circuit in short. Take one capacitor and one resistor, then connect them in series like this. I am using breadboard for this purpose. Lastly, connect a battery like this. A capacitor consists of two metal plates separated by a dielectric material. This is the 3D view of the capacitor. Each plate are of neutral charge which means that the atoms have equal number of protons and electrons. But as the battery is connected, the plate connected to the positive terminal pulls the electrons like this. And the plate connected to the negative terminal fills the electrons in the plate. This filling of electrons can be thought of as water filling a tank and the resistor can be thought of as the resistance provided by the pipe. So higher the resistance, the more time the capacitor will take to fill its negative plate with electrons. Now what we are interested is to find voltage across the capacitor. The voltage across a capacitor is directly proportional to the charge that each plate is holding. At the beginning there were no charge and hence the voltage across it is zero volts as can be seen on the voltmeter. But voltage starts rising as electrons start accumulating. So after some time, voltage across the capacitor reaches the supplied voltage, which is 9V in our case. Now this increase in voltage can be hard to visualize using a voltmeter. But using an oscilloscope just like one I have here, we can visualize voltage over time. On the oscilloscope screen, the horizontal axis is time and the vertical axis is voltage. So if there is changes in voltage in the measurement, we can not only visualize the present voltage but also its past. Let's connect channel 1 probe across the terminals of the capacitor. Now as I connect a 9V battery across the circuit, the voltage across the capacitor starts increasing as can be seen on the oscilloscope screen. The voltage rises and rises until it reaches the supplied voltage. In my case, the battery voltage is around 8.21V. This was later verified using my digital multimeter. To increase time, we can connect a higher value resistor. You can also use a higher value capacitor to increase time. Now in my circuit, if I connect a 68 kilo ohm resistor instead of 10 kilo ohms and connect the battery, the capacitor takes more time to increase voltage across it. The process of storing charge in a capacitor is called charging. The charges remains in the capacitor indefinitely and the voltage remains constant. To discharge a capacitor, connect the resistor in parallel with it. The electrons finds an easy path to flow 
and the voltage goes down from fully charged voltage to zero volts. In the water tank timer, as water level reaches level A, water comes out of the pipe. This level is called threshold level. In our circuit, we need a similar threshold voltage detector. An example of such detector is a transistor. BC547 is a generic NPN type transistor. Please check datasheet of the transistor you use to get pinout details and other informations. The simplest equivalent symbol of a transistor as a switch looks like this. It acts as an open switch between collector and emitter without base voltage. But if you connect a 0.7 volts across base and emitter, the transistor acts as a closed key. Please watch my transistor as a switch video to understand more about this topic. The base to emitter voltage, denoted by V subscript BE, must be around 0.7 volts in order to turn the transistor on. So 0.7 volts is the threshold voltage for a bipolar junction transistor. The threshold voltage can be different even for the same transistor model, but it is between 0.6 to 0.8 volts. Now what if we lower this voltage? In lower voltages, the BZT turns off. So the transistor remains off if VBE is 0.2 volts or 0.3 volts or 0.5 volts. But as 0.7 volts is reached, the transistor turns on. It can also be seen graphically. The x-axis shows time and y-axis shows base to emitter voltage. Right now the transistor is on because V subscript PE is above threshold level. But as it crosses this level, the transistor turns off. As the voltage rises again and crosses this threshold level, the transistor turns on. In the RC circuit we discussed, the voltage across the capacitor rises slowly when a voltage source is applied across it. It charges up to the supplied voltage V. The charging time is up to the point at which voltage across the capacitor reaches the supplied voltage V and voltage remains constant afterwards. To discharge the capacitor, connect a resistor between these two points. But before that, you must disconnect the voltage source by turning the switch off. When the resistor is connected, voltage across the capacitor decreases from charged voltage to zero volts over time. So, for charging, disconnect this switch and turn the other switch on. Current flows through the circuit and voltage across the capacitor increases. And for discharging, disconnect this switch and turn the other switch on. This time, current flows in the other direction and voltage decreases over time. Let's name the charging switch as S1 and the discharging switch as S2. Now here comes the fun part. Let's connect the wires which are connected across the capacitor to the base and emitter terminal of the transistor like this. What if we charge the capacitor? As the charging switch S1 is turned on, voltage across base and emitter will rise slowly as shown in this graph. As the voltage across the capacitor reaches threshold voltage of the transistor, the transistor turns on. So we successfully built a timer circuit. The time interval is the time taken by the capacitor to reach 0.7 volts. This time can be set by using different values of R and C. We will discuss about this at the end of this video. To get an output from the timer, let's use a buzzer as a load and connect it like this. Let's understand the circuit from the beginning. First, the switch S1 is turned on, while S2 remains off. Current cannot flow through the buzzer because the transistor is currently open, so buzzer remains off. But current can flow through the capacitor and hence voltage across base and emitter rises over time. And as it reaches the threshold voltage of the transistor, the transistor turns on and the buzzer buzzes, which specifies that time is over. 
Now there is a problem in this design. The transistor will not be fully on because of high resistance used in the series RC brands such as 50k or 100k like that. The transistor not fully on means that there will be some resistance between collector and emitter. This greatly limits current and the buzzer remains off. To solve this problem, another transistor, this time PNP type transistor can be used. The previous one is NPN type transistor. This is the simplest equivalent symbol of PNP transistor as a switch. Connect the buzzer in common emitter configuration like this. We know that in case of PNP type transistors, it requires negative 0.7 volts at the base with respect to emitter to turn on. We can also connect the base to the negative terminal of same source in series with a resistor to turn it on. This resistance will be provided by the NPN transistor. Also, to make sure that the PNP transistor is strongly off, connect the resistor towards the positive side like this. So this is the final circuit. As the switch S1 is turned on, current cannot flow through the NPN transistor. And also, as the base of the PNP transistor is towards the positive side, the PNP transistor remains off and no current flows. But as the capacitor charges up to a level in which the resistance across collector and emitter is significantly low for the PNP transistor to saturate, the PNP transistor turns on and the buzzer buzzes. So this is how the circuit works. One more thing in the circuit is that to use it again you must discharge the capacitor. To do that, turn S1 off, then turn S2 on. This will discharge the capacitor or you can say it resets the timer. So this is the final schematic, let's make this circuit. First, I gathered all the components required to make the circuit. Then I glued components such as switches and capacitor on a piece of cardboard. After that, I soldered the components according to the schematic. So after around 15 minutes, the timer circuit is ready. Lastly, I soldered a 9V battery connector wires in the circuit and then connected a 9V battery. Then I turned the charging switch on. So the circuit works. For fun, let's check voltage across base and emitter of the transistor using my oscilloscope. The voltage across it increases in this way and the delay is up to the point when voltage reaches the threshold voltage of the transistor as can be seen on the oscilloscope screen. You might think that the capacitor charges up to the supplied voltage. But see what happens. The voltage remains constant. But why? The capacitor doesn't charge up to the supplied voltage but remains constant with a voltage slightly above the threshold voltage. This is because the base to emitter junction of a transistor is just like a PN junction diode. The VI characteristics of PN junction diode shows that for different values of base current, the voltage remains around 0.7 volts. So that's the reason why voltage remains constant after threshold voltage is reached. In an RC series circuit, the time it takes for a capacitor to charge or discharge depends upon the values of R and C. The time constant of an RC circuit is the product of R and C. The time it takes to completely charge or completely discharge a capacitor takes around 5 time constants. So in our timer circuit, by changing the values of R and C, you can change time. Also note that the value of discharging resistor is kept low to discharge the capacitor quickly. 
to find exact delay of the timer, capacitor charging equation can be used. In the equation, the V subscript C is the instantaneous voltage across the capacitor, V subscript S is the supplied voltage, and this is the exponential term where T means time and RC means you already know time constant. If we plot this equation in a graph having constant DC voltage source, we will see the same charging curve like this. So to find time, rearrange the equation as shown. Separate the exponential term, then take natural log on both sides. We know that the natural log of e to the x is x, therefore natural log of e to the minus t over rc is minus t over rc. Now just rearrange the equation and we get this equation for time. What will be the time taken by a timer to turn on the buzzer if voltage of the voltage source is 9 volts? Resistance is 68 kilo ohms and capacitance is 1000 microfarad. Threshold voltage of the transistor is 0.6 volts. So to find time, use the equation we just found. Put the given values, resistance, capacitance. In a timer circuit, Time t is up to when instantaneous voltage reaches the threshold voltage. So in the equation, V subscript c will be 0.6 and the source voltage is 9 volts. So time equals 4.692 seconds. Now here is a question for you. Find t for the following values. Voltage source is 9 volts. Resistance is 200 kilo ohms. Capacitance is 1500 microfarad and threshold voltage is 0.7 volts. Answer it in the comment section below.